Welcome back to High School Sports Extra. For some, it's the best time of year on the high school athletics calendar. The prep football playoffs get underway next week. So tonight, we'll take a look at our area's top seeds and break down the brackets. Let's start with the top-ranked team in the state in Division I, Fond du Lac. The Cardinals announced their presence in 2018 by snapping Kimberly's state record 70-game winning streak after winning that game 31-28 on a last-second field goal. The Cardinals went on to outscore their next eight opponents 379-54. to Fondy finished as the VFA South champions in a perfect 9-0 overall. First up for Fondy will be a matchup with Madison LaFollette, who got into the postseason despite a 4-5 record. The winner of that one gets Arrowhead or Verona. Bayport earns our area's other number one seed in Division I. The Pirates continue to dominate the Fox River Classic with 27 straight league wins. That's back to back to back for those counting at home. The Pirates did most of their damage on the ground this season, rushing for 2,222 yards and 47 scores. Bayport's defense allowed more than six points in only three games this year. So who does Bayport get in round one? It's an FRCC rematch with the Pier. The Redbirds are the smallest qualifier in the D1 field. They also got in with a four and five conference mark. Uh, the Pirates defeated De Pere 49-0 October 5th. The winner of that one gets the winner of Afton North versus Hudson. Further down the bracket, three-seed Nina will battle a Preble team that started the year 6-0 but enters the postseason on a three-game losing streak. Five-time defending state champion Kimberly. Talk about burying the lead, huh? The papermakers start out against Chippewa Falls. And if you're wondering, it could be Kimberly versus Fondy part two in the state semifinal round. Sign me up. No number one seeds in Division II, but Schwabenon keeps its long playoff streak alive. 21 straight years. The AC to Jaguars will travel to the VFA West champs, Marshfield, who are 9-0. Nice 4-5 matchup as one loss Menasha will play host to Hortonville. Down the bracket, 8-1 Pulaski is a three seed. They'll welcome in Menominee. And next Saturday, Kakana will play a postseason game for the first time in a decade against River Falls. In Division Three, West Pier earns a top seed. The Phantoms finished as the unbeaten Bay Conference champions at 9-0. It's the second straight Bay title for Jack Batten's bunch. WDP's D allowed more than seven points just three times all year. They rushed for more than 2,700 yards and 46 touchdowns. West Pier will try to make a run to state for the first time since they made three straight trips from 2009 to 2011. First up for the Phantoms, who are the biggest team in Division Three this year. A home game against Anago Friday night. The winner of that one will face the winner of Freedom Mosinee. And how about this for a great first round battle? It's a Bay Conference rematch. New London lines up against Seymour. The Bulldogs won the first matchup 10-7. Next up for the winner of that is the victory between FVL and Notre Dame. The Tritons have made it to state in two of the last three years. Over to the right side of the bracket, uh, six seed Berlin will travel to Mount Hora Barneveld and one more to get to in Division Three. Luxembourg Casco sent out there. They're, they're going to take on Grafton next Friday. Moving along to Division Four, Little Shoot is a top seed, and the Mustangs certainly earned it, galloping through the minefield that is the Northeastern Conference with a perfect 9-0 record to finish the regular season. Last night, they claimed their first outright league title since 1986. Little Shoot. One of the more balanced teams in the area, throwing for more than 1,200 yards through the air and rushing for more than 2,000 to go with 31 touchdowns on the ground. Brian Richkowski's team will tangle with Rippin in round one Friday night. Denmark beat Freedom 20-14 to last night to qualify for the playoffs for the first time in four years. The Vikings will travel to Chilton next week. Xavier beat Wapaka last night to advance the postseason play. It was win and in, and the Hawks won. They won't have to travel far for their first round matchup against Wrightstown. The winner of that one will take on the winner of two seed Winnicani and number seven, Two Rivers. On the right side of the Division Four bracket is where we find Keel. The Raiders entered the playoffs 9 0 and were the outright champions of the Eastern Wisconsin Conference. Second ranked Racine St. Cath's earned the number one seed in that grouping, if you're curious. To Division Five, where St. Mary Springs has the lowest enrollment of any squad in D5, but the Ledgers are also the top ranked team in that division. And Bob Hyland's team is the top seed once again. 9 0. No surprise, the champions of the flyway. Last year's D6 champs will look to take the D5 crown this year at Camp Randall. First up for Springs is a home game against Dominican, and it's no walk in the park after that. Amro, who finished 8-1 and one this season, and second in the flyway versus 7-2 and two Valders, the runner-up in the Eastern Wisconsin Conference. New Holstein is a number six seed. They will travel to Amherst in round one, while Howard's Grove will hit the road to take on Cedar Grove, Belgium. 
another number one seed in Division 5, and it's Kiwani. As you saw in our Game of the Week at the top of the program, the Storm clinched the MON LPC large outright with a 38-22 victory over Peshtigo. It's Kiwani's first conference title since 2010, and the Storm will be looking for their first playoff win in five years. To get that victory, Kiwani will have to get past Rib Lake Prentice on Friday, and then it's a rematch of the MON LPC large rivals. Southern Door welcomes in Peshtigo. The Eagles won the first time around 42 to 22. One more to catch up with in D5. Bonduel, the Bears, a six seed. They will take on Colby. Iola Scandinavia may be the team to beat in D6 this year. The Thunderbirds fell to St. Mary's Springs in the Division 7 state championship game 35 to 12 last year. Well, they don't have to mess around with the Ledgers. This year, Iola finished the regular season as the undefeated CWC Large Division champs, and Bryce Hittner is back. He's run for 858 yards and 28 touchdowns in just nine games. First up for Iola, number eight seed, Three Lakes Phelps. The winners, winner of that one will get the clash between Coleman and Cribbits. The Cougars won the first meeting 48-19. In the next grouping is where we find Manawa. They welcome in Auburndale. Winner of that one takes on the winner of Niagara Goodman Pembine against Abbotsford and Lords Academy finished in a three-way tie for the Trailways South Conference Championship, but that only earned the Knights a number five seed. Lords will take the road to meet up with Marcus Sand. Not a lot of respect for a Knights team that lost one game all year, and it was by five points. Okay, we've made it all the way to D7. Reedsville has the biggest enrollment of any school in Division 7 this year. They will welcome in six seed Surring Friday night. Hilbert is a number two. They finished the regular season eight and one in second place in the Big East. The Wolves will welcome in seven seed Rasholt in round one. This year marks the first year of WIA eight player playoffs as well. Congrats to Gibraltar and Sevastopol for punching their tickets to the eight man tourney. When we come back in high school sports extra, it's time to name a team of the week plus our local five top five. So keep it here.